Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and also to this series, the Q&A uh, Jessie's Mailbag series, where I just um, super casually answer your questions that you get to leave using the link in my uh, caption. And we're in my office and uh, no big production crew today, just uh, you and me. So the question I wanted to answer was where do you start when wanting to accept your body? Now, this is a pretty vague question, and not, not vague necessarily, but really hard to answer because the whole process of how to accept your body is a complicated one that I've like dedicated my life to and have a million resources out there, but certainly can't be summed up in one quick 10 minute video for you. So what I wanted to say about this is, I recommend starting by accepting wherever you are now. And I say that because there, there tends to be a ton of shame wrapped up in people who are struggling with body image issues. Not just shame about their body, meaning I don't look how I want to look or how I should look and I have shame about that, but shame about their body image issues. Meaning at this point, there's like a standard that we should love ourselves and feel good all the time because body positivity and I don't know, like feminism and social justice t tell us that we should all be free and love ourselves and you know fight the man and push back against systems of oppression and so a lot of times people will come to me and they'll say like essentially they'll express self-hatred for hating themselves you know what I mean like they express meta hatred meta self-criticism meta shame because it's like shame about shame hatred about hatred criticism about criticism they'll say I can't believe I'm still this judgmental about my body I know better Ugh. you know and so there's a lot of frustration and guilt and shame and embarrassment all wrapped up, not just in your body, although we know that that's true, but in how you feel about your body. And so the first thing I say is like, let's start there. Let's embrace the fact that you don't like your body because it's normal, right? Like, I mean, statistically, if we're using the definition of normal as being like really common, it is normal. But also I just mean like it's it's a normal response to being in our culture. It is a normal response to growing up with the influences that you have undoubtedly grown up with to hate your body. Now, a lot of the work that I do is about helping you unpack and distance yourself from the beliefs and meaning and significance that are not true that have been layered on top of your relationship to your body. For example, if you learned somewhere along the way that having the right kind of body would earn you belonging or earn you respect or earn you um, a secure partnership, like now it feels really important to look the right way, not just because you would prefer to look that way, but because it's terrifying. What if I don't look the right way and then I don't get those things? Or I want those things so badly and my body's going to be the thing that like cock blocks them from me. You know, like my body is standing in the way of those things. Ah, I hate my body, you know. So the reasons we hate our bodies, the reasons that we get so upset and wrapped up in in wanting to look different or, or obsessing over how we look is because we have undue significance and meaning attached to it. Body neutrality, the work I do, is helping people strip that away. But in the end, it's not like they just love how they look. In the end, it's a lot of like just kind of going, eh, it doesn't matter. I don't like how I look today, but that doesn't matter, you know, because they've stripped away all of that stuff that made it super potent. Like if you hate, let's say you hate um, the size of your body because you are convinced that it will keep you from finding a sense of community and belonging and acceptance and a secure partnership, but then you get all those things in your current body at this current weight, well, boom, you've just disproven this entire thing, right? It's like, oh well then I guess my body's not that much of a problem after all. You still might not like how you look, you still might prefer to be different, but all that suffering and hatred and energy and power that it had over you just dissipates so that you're like, okay, I mean, it just is what it is, you know? That's the acceptance and neutrality that I'm working my clients towards. And the first thing we have to do is accept that they don't accept their bodies. So I highly recommend that. If that's a place that is of um, if that's accessible for you, if that's available for you, start there. Accepting that you cannot accept it is valid. And if you can't do that, try going back further. Can you accept that you refuse to accept your body negativity and the fact that you can't accept your body, you know? Like go back as far as you need to go because you're going to start somewhere and it's going to be, it's going to be some in that invites compassion. 
However far you got to go back to get to compassion is exactly how far back you got to go. Also, I think having that compassion and understanding is a big piece of why I offer book recommendations and things like anti-diet and the fuck it diet and um, the Sabrina Strings book, Fearing the Black Body and Health at Every Size and Body Respect. Like these are books that I recommend because they really put into perspective that you are not crazy. Like there's nothing wrong with you for hating your body. There's nothing wrong with you for obsessing over your weight. There's nothing wrong with you. These are normal responses to the circumstances you've been put in. And so a lot of that education work, not only is it helpful to sort of break down, like um, do the, the sort of relearning around these concepts that is really helpful for body neutrality, it also invites a lot of compassion so that you can see like you're not a weirdo <laughs> you don't have a problem individually this is a systemic problem that you have just found yourself in the middle of and i think immediately that just brings so much more compassion and i invite there to be a lot of like curiosity and even lightness in all of this clients will sometimes come to me and just be like i can't stop doing this thing you know and i'm like totally first of all that hurts so bad like i that is real and that is valid and i I see it and I hear it and I hold it and it's it's brutal and it's fascinating tell me more you know like body image is really interesting tell me where that comes from tell me what that feels like tell me what that brings up for you what associations do you have with a certain kind of body what does that body represent to you where did you learn that what does that make you feel you know like if you set aside the criticism for having any of this stuff go on inside your head in the first place you get to open a massively interesting box where you get to just explore and the answers are in there. You know, um, questions like what is, what is a certain kind of body represent to you? It's going to take you somewhere really interesting. And if you're mad at yourself for going there, like it's going to be a twice as difficult struggle. If you're like, Oh, it's fat phobia. I can't believe I'm fat phobic. Oh, this is terrible. I'm like, Hey, of course you're fat phobic. You grew up in a fat phobic culture. Let's get that out of the way. Like, we're both fat phobic. I ju I'm just further along the journey, maybe, of having unpacked and dismantled that inside myself. We both grew up in the same culture, you know? We both learned this stuff. So it's not a moral judgment. It's just an invitation to be curious. So accept the fact that you don't accept your body. Get curious. Be kind to yourself. As much compassion as you can invite into the fact that you are struggling with this, not because there's anything wrong with you, but because this is a rational, normal response to the culture we live in and the experiences that you've had. I hope that's helpful. The other thing I would say is use physicality. If this is available to you, start with physicality, meaning try playing with and observing the physicality that shows up in your body image issues and the physicality that would show up in somebody who didn't have body image issues. So this can take a little bit of imagination, a little bit of like role playing mindset, definitely some alter ego practices that I give clients sometimes. Um, but just pay attention, like when you are the most body insecure, what body language shows up? What happens to you physically? For most of my clients, their voices get smaller. Uh, sometimes they get higher pitched. Sometimes they get quieter. Um, sometimes their shoulders will shrink forwards or they'll like kind of curve or duck. Um, sometimes it goes completely the other way and they like try to take up more space to make up for a feeling of insecurity. Whatever it is, just pay attention to what it is for you. And then imagine, what would it look like? What would your physicality look like? What would show up in your body language if you were confident, body neutral, and believed you were worthy of taking up space? What would that look like? And then play with that. Try putting on that physicality first and see what that does to you emotionally, mentally, and physically. Just pay attention. Because again, this is a big exploration. This is a lot of trial and error. But that's a good place to start if it's available to you. Um, for example, I've had clients where like session one, their goal for the week in between sessions or whatever before I talked to them next was to stand up straighter and talk louder. Sometimes that's enough to just shake you out of this thing that's like my job is to squish and shrink and hide. And it's like just to, to show up more expansively physically can make you, first of all, face some demons inside yourself if that's um, really scary. And second of all, start to change your chemistry, like literally change how you feel. So um, that would be my other recommendation for a place to start. I hope that's helpful. Um, thank you for watching my series. If you have questions that you want answered in an upcoming video, just leave uh, your question using the link in my caption. You can ask anything personal, professional, work-related, whatever you want. 
um, and I will be happy to uh, go through those questions and answer them for you. And of course, if you like my free content, go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe. Feel free to leave me a comment and we can chat there. And if you want to support me, I do have a Patreon link that I'll leave in the caption as well, which is just a way that you can kind of ensure that I'm able to uh, free up the time needed to just keep putting out more content like this. That's it. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time.